Welcome to an introduction to agent-based modeling. I'm Bill Rand, and I'll be your instructor for this course. I am an assistant professor of business management at the Poole College of Management at North Carolina State University, and also have a training in computer science. And in this course, we're going to be talking about why agent-based modeling is useful, what you can use it for, how you can understand it, how you can build models, how you can understand models that other people have built, how to analyze those models, and how to use those models in advanced ways to really start to understand problems that you might see around you. Now, um, throughout this course, uh, we're going to talk about technical details, but we're not going to require you to know anything about uh, computer programming or computer modeling going into the course. But before we get into all those details, I want to start with kind of a brief uh, video and a brief discussion that I usually start almost all of my agent-based modeling classes with. So what you are seeing in front of you is a set of birds that often flock together in very interesting ways. And they do this as they move through space without really uh, coordination, without really kind of any centralized plan of where they should go or how they should move. But the patterns that they generate are quite ornate and quite beautiful. And they have a certain regularity to them if you observe them over time, a certain pattern of behavior that you see throughout them. And a lot of what we're going to talk about is how to go from individual level rules of behavior to these aggregate, beautiful, emergent patterns that we see around us. And that's really what agent-based modeling in many ways was designed to do. So how do individuals who are behaving on their own come together to create these, these vast patterns of behavior that we see around us. Um, and more importantly, or in, I should say in addition, how do those patterns of behavior then feed back to affect those same individuals trying to make decisions? Now, let's try and work backwards from this to begin with. So I'm going to bring up now a computer model uh, that was created to kind of represent the patterns that the, these birds that we see around us. And in this computer model, as you might see in front of you, the birds often behave in very similar ways to the ways of the actual birds that we saw in real life. Now, not quite the same. You know, there are some differences. This is a two-dimensional model as opposed to a three-dimensional model. And there are other reasons why the, there is a difference in the ways that they behave. But in other ways, they are quite similar. Now, I'm going to start and stop the model several times. I already have a couple times. And you see that um, the, we start with a random distribution of birds, what we're going to later call agents throughout this course. And these birds move and interact, but slowly they coalesce. And occasionally we'll speed the model up a little bit, and we'll slow it down a little bit, and you can see how they might interact with each other. Now, if you've never seen this model before, I encourage you to kind of go back and look at the model several times. And if you want, this model is actually available in NetLogo, in the language that we'll be using throughout this course. And it's called a flocking model in NetLogo. If you go and open the NetLogo model, and you go to File, Models, Library, Biology, and then click on the flocking model, you can see the model for yourself. And what I want you to do is I want to hit, have you hit set up and go several times without really looking at anything else in the model, really, really exploring the model. And I want you to try and start to infer the rules of behavior of the birds in this model. Now, um, I, I'll give you some hints, right? There are only three rules, and they're very simple, right? Uh, the colors of the birds have nothing to do with the rules. The colors are just there to differentiate one bird from the other so that they don't appear to be the same, all the same exact bird. And um, the, um, and the original, and all the birds act in exactly the same set of rules. There is no difference between the set of rules that the birds behave. Okay? So at this point, I'm going to stop this video. And I want you to try and see if you can write out in any kind of scratch paper or anything you have around the three set of rules that are exist within the system. And when we come back, I will uh, explain to you what those three rules are and why they're kind of a great way to get an introduction to agent-based modeling. 